Welcome guys to another episode of Boom Arena. Today we're gonna be playing with some splamatory because honestly why not? Like I've said previously in these types of videos, it's one of the most solid decks in the game ever created, so we might as well just play with it and see what happens. We're gonna be facing in the game number one the 77 Gato Gato, how however you wanna pronounce it. And my guess is he's gonna be playing some uh, super apes, so we're gonna just block this bomb skeleton from ever accessing uh, crossing our bridge and actually he's gonna be playing digger instead so that's gonna be actually a very good uh, sign for us uh, he got some value with poison and actually he's going to be playing poison EQ which is odd <laughs> odd to say the least I would love him to play piercing archer at some point yeah I'm gonna just play another skeleton hunt because why not He's gonna be playing Piercing Archer now, and he's gonna be playing Lightning as well, so right now uh, it's gonna be a very tough matchup for sure, because obviously with uh, uh, with that uh, amount of spells we cannot play passive, we have to like go for some aggression at some point, and that's gonna be basically our plan, we're gonna cycle some uh, T-Rex in the back, um, Rex, wait for his response. That's gonna be actually a wrong response because he allows our T-Rex to cross the bridge and right now we can just uh, get our T-Rex uh, tanking for the cemetery. Actually we don't get like two lucky skeleton RNG, RNG obviously being a short uh, uh, term for a random number generator. We're gonna get a skeleton hat and uh, swordsman as soon as possible because I anticipated this poison coming down from a mile away and right now I kind of think uh, I kind of think we can get away with not playing anything on it at all whatsoever. I actually don't trust my footman kick I've played right here, so I'm gonna just add uh, something more. I'm gonna play some cemetery. I'm gonna play some poison as well. And actually, my T-Rex doesn't cross the bridge, so this earthquake was kind of a waste of him. But at the same time, uh, better safe than sorry. So I kind of understand his uh, move. I'm gonna cycle once again a T-Rex because I see that he has a very bad time dealing with them. I'm gonna play a Swordsman at the bridge and... Uh, okay, I'm gonna actually get a Swordsman right now across and obviously a Poison on the Piercing Archer and he does... Okay, he has Poison but he throws it on our Viking Tower because he doesn't believe he can win and that's gonna be the first game first down with a Splamatry, which like I said, is probably the most solid deck uh, in, uh, in Boombarina like ever. If you don't know what to run, run Splamatry. And the second game of today's video will be against El Vager, uh, with some handmade emojis, so like... Uh, <sighs> I'm gonna just throw a poison against this. My opponent will be playing some kind of a steel bait with uh, a skeleton hut. Obviously, he can be playing whatever because he has 30 metal, so I don't expect them to run real decks. But it still annoys me to see that uh, there are so many people that kind of need a very good decks to dominate the ladder. And I'm just posting videos every single day about which decks are the best in the current meta and in overall. Like, Slammetry is not like particularly good in a pro meta right now but if you're a casual player it's definitely a good pick so the first tip that i would advise my men would be to subscribe to my youtube channel and if you and like get shamelessly plucked in the middle of video because i'm on the uh, i would be gladly appreciating all of your support if you were to just subscribe to my YouTube channel and help me uh, reach uh, some goals in my life, like uh, living a life where I can pay my bills by teaching others how to play a strategy game online. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna just go for the cemetery because I don't see a world where he stops that. Or maybe like he can amortize some damage, he actually gets like the biggest splash of the uh, bomb girl that I've seen in my life. On the same note though, he's gonna give me the biggest poison value I've seen in my life, so it kind of cancels out. And I think in my favor, so I'm gonna just play Bomber against the Steel Hammer, 
there's nothing bad about it. I'm gonna suck the bomber for it, but it's 2-4-4, four, four, which is like definitely good trade. It's all as if you just played a mana collector but got the result instantly. It's fantastic. I'm gonna play T-Rex in the back for this Mother Devil. I'm gonna play a Swordsman as well, just starting to build some kind of push. This Mother Devil shouldn't be like hurting my Swordsman too much. I'm gonna play some Bomber because why not? Not even in the correct lane, but it, it, obviously it wasn't an intention, so... But I'm not gonna call it mistake either because this Bomber after all finished this tower down, so it's very fun to see. I'm gonna play some Cyclone to activate my Viking Tower because at this point I have already secured the win and I can do whatever I want to do. So I'm gonna play Poison here because like I said, why not? I have the win secured so I can do whatever I want. And that's gonna be it for this game. I'm gonna throw a cemetery, GG's nice play, and that's gonna be the game number two. Very easily wrapped up with the most versatile deck in the entire world. And next game will be against TTU with 10 models. Let's just cycle Skeleton Hut because it's always a good starting play. Unless you're running against like very aggressive win condition which can be stopped uh, easily by a building. So he's gonna actually play a... Holy cow, I don't know what he's playing. At this point, he just confused me too much. I'm not gonna try to reach the intricacies of his deck. I'm just gonna play some splash cards to counter this uh, footman hat and a skeleton hat and a swordsman. Basically, everything. He activates my Viking Tower while playing Cemetery. That's definitely a mistake. I usually don't uh, like playing these. Uh, these games that kinda end uh, too quickly, but at the same time, this time I think it's actually a uh, very valuable lesson because uh, because of this Viking activation, my opponent won't struggle to the end of the game because he will like get eliminated very quickly. Uh, but at the same time, that's the play that can pretty much lose you the game if you're a, a, a Splemetry player. You basically never want to activate your uh, opponent's Viking Tower, because if you do, you're already setting yourself uh, for a failure. I'm gonna actually play very aggressively for no reason. I should have definitely waited, uh, and yeah, I'm not gonna take the Viking Tower here, and neither I think my opponent wants me to do uh, the thing as well, so I'm gonna just play Poison on this. I don't think it's the best play, but it's definitely a waiting play, which uh, maybe uh, will piss him off so that he can quit uh, faster, so you never know. I'm gonna play Skeleton Hut and basically prepare to defend against his cemetery uh, if he ever dares to uh, like go across because I don't think he can ever uh, do. I'm gonna yeah, counter his Fun King. I'm gonna go for the cemetery and then last second swordsman that's also very important so that your swordsman uh, tanks for as long as it's physically possible and uh, as you probably can tell skeletons are very fragile so if you if you, the skeletons will fight uh, off the towers they will die pretty quickly but if they have something to for them to uh, tank they will stack up and deal like infinite damage on your opponent's tower so that's pretty much the strat gg nice play it let's jump to the next game of the video and next game of today's video will be against Chiva Chase, so that's gonna be actually interesting one because I think Viking Bridge Slam, which he always plays against me and against every single person on ladder, uh, is gonna be pretty weak against. Uh, I mean, um, Splendor will be pretty weak against Viking Bridge Slam, but at the same time, I'll have to try at least once. So I'm gonna just go with some pressure, and I actually get a very solid damage. Let's see if we can like survive or something. I'm gonna play. Footman cake here, just to activate his ghost, make it useless and basically be chilling. I'm gonna play uh, T-Rex here to... Okay, he's very aggressive. As you probably can see, my man very aggressive and he definitely uh, doesn't like uh, the start that he's uh, gotten himself into. So I'm gonna just actually let it go. I was considering going with the swordsman, but at the same time I don't want to overcommit too much. He actually lets me get a hit with the bomber, which is very huge and I definitely appreciate it. So, the difficulty uh, in this matchup will be obviously that uh, I don't have too many good distractions, so I'll have to play smart most of the time. I'm gonna play uh, Cemetery here, just 
just to stop uh, the Viking at the bridge, at least try to do so. Uh, I'm gonna cycle to a T-Rex and then a Cemetery and basically pray that uh, this is gonna work. I'm gonna play a Footman Keg just to kill the Piercing Archer as soon as possible and I actually won't uh, be able to do so, so uh, that's very annoying. I'm gonna play a Bomber just to clean up his ghost and then Piercing Archer preserving the Swordsman for the future actions and now we've just traded a bunch of cards at the bridge. I don't think either of us got like too much ahead because obviously I'm ahead uh, on damage but I don't like uh, believe that's gonna be sufficient. He actually gets like a godly lightning and I should have definitely respected it. He gets a cyclone and that's definitely a good trade. I would say even fabulous trade for him. Uh, he's not gonna get too many apes, maybe one, there we go. I'm gonna get a poison here right now, because uh, on honestly why not. I'm gonna get a swordsman here and uh, right now we're gonna just uh, awaiting his arrival because there's frankly nothing I can do about it. I'm gonna uh, play some T-Rex in the back, I'm gonna play poison on his piercing archer and then I'm gonna just try to uh, basically delete his uh, twins before they arrive. He gets a lot of damage. Uh, with his pressure, but I don't think... Okay, maybe he can hold this symmetry push, but if he doesn't, that's gonna be very beautiful. So he he actually gets a piercing archer on my tower, which is uh, very surprising. Uh, I'm gonna get a symmetry here with a poison, very aggressive poison, but at the same time, it's the poison we need. And at this point, we're in a pickle because we have to play very aggressively if we uh, want to survive. At the same time, you kind of don't want to play too aggressively against Viking Bridge Spam uh, because it might end uh, very badly, uh, very quickly. Uh, I think this uh, T-Rex will be uh, enough to cancel this Viking out. I'm gonna be absolutely correct on this one. And right now I'm gonna just go for another Cemetery push. He's gonna be late with the poison and that's gonna be a lot of damage on his tower. So it's gonna be already very cool for me to see. It's even lingering still. I'm gonna actually right now just play some things at the bridge because he has to do something if he doesn't want to lose. And he's gonna lose regardless because I was just too aggressive at the bridge at the end and fortunately we're gonna get this game down. I really was afraid of this because Viking person, like I said, usually scores very, uh, very good against a uh, Splemetry for two reasons. First of all, you have poison in this deck, so you can just, well, poison the Cemetery every time and you basically get uh, no damage. So like, kind of Cemetery player is on the clock while Viking player can just attack, attack, attack over and over and suddenly he'll just break uh, free. And once he breaks, he just instantly wins. Uh, whereas, uh, and the second way is to just play some troops on defense to defend this planetary and then like counter push uh, with uh, instrumental amount of troops and that's scary as well. So two very scary ways of uh, punishing symmetry, but we've managed to come out on top. So yeah, very GG's. Let's jump to the game number five. I've actually realized that in the previous game, I went for a very wild run. So if you want, rate my run in the comments down below so I can like improve for the next time and at the... Uh, at, uh, right now we're gonna be facing E-Dog with 106 medals who's gonna be playing a uh, Viking Gunner, two tiny's deck which is certainly unconventional. Uh, we're gonna be judges of whether it's bad or not. So far we're gonna get a very good trade against what he's doing because we're gonna get some leftover troops uh, from this push and nothing too bad so far. We're gonna actually get the cemetery. I think it's a good uh, way of attacking. His bomber will actually help out this uh, defending the cemetery, but still some skeletons pile up and he should be respecting my cemetery because even though it's usually not a good idea to... Uh, uh, it's, not, it's usually not a good idea to uh, play a naked symmetry. It still deals some damage and you definitely have to respect that. Right now I didn't have a good way to punish his mana collector, so I had to pull out some uh, weird uh, plays. Right now I should be 
first of all this uh, 30 mana behind which I was uh, from the previous uh, interaction and then I'm gonna be like uh, even more on minus because uh, this interaction wasn't definitely good I'm gonna be playing a T-Rex here because I think it's actually a uh, good defensive uh, tool here I'm gonna play a Cyclone to just activate my Viking Tower it doesn't really matter whether Balloon hits or not it's usually better if it doesn't but uh, uh, regardless of uh, which I'm gonna get a uh, Viking Tower activation and a Cemetery rolling and I don't think that was a too good of a Cemetery because I didn't uh, have something for the Gunner on time it definitely got some value for my opponent and that's why uh, this attack wasn't successful at all. I'm gonna cycle another T-Rex because he played Viking and well, Viking doesn't counter air so we might just as well take the, ad take the advantage of that. I'm gonna play Skeleton Hut low. Uh, honestly, I don't have a particular reason why. Also, this poison was absolutely atrocious and I, if I weren't uh, to have like this Footman Cat, it would have been like absolute national disaster so yeah right now I have to play a swordsman and he uh, made a huge blunder because I can just poison it but even going a cemetery against this would be fine and I think I'm gonna actually go a cemetery into what he has because this gunner is not enough to hold this T-Rex and right now he has nothing to stab or push GG's nice played I'm gonna leave GG's as well because he played very well Yet I think our tower may be flawless. Like I, I don't, I didn't count the damage, but uh, pretty much uh, no uh, threat to our tower whatsoever. So there you have it. One of the most versatile decks ever, Splemetry. If you want to uh, have a deck that you can use in pretty much any meta, that's definitely one of the choices. And if you want to learn it, you can use my video as an example. I've uh, showcased some. Uh, some important, some maybe less important matchups, uh, which uh, you can use as a uh, example of how to uh, apply strategy of this deck in various situations. So yeah, thanks you for watching till the end. If you enjoyed my content and uh, aren't subscribed yet, you definitely should consider doing so because I upload the content every single day and you definitely can learn something about Boom Arena from them. So yeah, definitely check them out. And uh, once again, first time watching, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next episode of Marina.